What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and I'm here today to give you my professional gaming opinion on McPixel 3. McPixel 3 is a game I'd plan to take a look at around its launch, sometime the back end of 2022, but for reasons I'll elaborate on later, I didn't get around to it. Anyway, now it's January, and the gaming release schedule is looking sparse, assuming you don't count the 200 porn games launching daily on Steam, so I feel like playing catch up a little bit. McPixel 3 is the sequel to Soss Sosowski's 2012 hit, McPixel. Soss is a weird guy. I think that's probably the simplest and politest way of putting it. It was actually Alzareth that pointed out to me that there's no McPixel 2. I'd assumed I'd missed it somewhere in the past decade. There's a lot of indie games, it'd be easy done, but no, it simply doesn't exist, which I guess is in itself some kind of silly deafness on Soss's part. The McPixel games are kind of a mini-game compilation. Our protagonist, I guess his name is McPixel? Scottish, perhaps? We Rabbi McPixel. Anyway, our dude, our guy, he must partake of a huge and baffling array of silly scenarios which are usually, though not universally, about preventing a bomb from blowing up. Or at least not being personally blown up by a bomb anyway. It's crude, it's ridiculous, and most of it makes no sense. Each chapter gives you a handful of scenarios, sometimes centred around a common theme, which you'll cycle through until you save the day in each of them. The bad outcomes are almost always just as daft as the good ones, and you're incentivized to play through as many as you can. After each one, you get a little film strip looking thing, showing you all the scenes you saw, and giving you an idea of how many other ones there are to find. You then get a bronze medal for playing the scenario once, a silver medal for winning it, and a gold medal for finding all of the potential outcomes. You also get some coins for every film segment you unlock, and a bonus for the gold medals, which you'll then spend on unlocking the next chapter. That's mechanically kind of it. It's not a deep, complex affair. It's leaning very heavily on you appreciating Sauce's rather twisted sense of humour. There's a lot of kicking people in the arse. That's actually like 99% of your interactions with other people in the game. There's a lot of peeing on things. There's a lot of putting things down your pants just because. It's like WarioWare, but made by someone who didn't have anyone to tell them no to any of their ideas. Or any kind of lawyers. Or quality control. Or uh, oversight of any kind, really. It's rapid-fire crude humour. That won't appeal to everyone, but you'll probably have a pretty good idea if it's for you. You'll be the kind of person who thinks Willy Willy Bomb Bomb is funny. Who enjoys fart jokes? Oh jeez, man, I sound really condescending. I would like to go on record as saying Willy Willy Bomb Bomb is in fact funny. I did enjoy McPixel 3. I'm not sure it was ever spectacularly laugh out loud funny, but it elicited plenty of chuckles and smiles. I think I enjoyed McPixel 1 more than 3 but I also think my tastes have changed somewhat in the last 10 years, too. But I also think that what I think of it is almost completely irrelevant. I've managed to exhaust everything I have to say about it in uh, about three minutes, so let's talk about comedy video games. Or perhaps this was a cunning ruse all along to talk about comedy video games because I think it's an interesting diversion. Who could possibly say? McPixel 3 is, I would say, commendable for attempting to tackle a genre that's not often done. It's probably worth playing on those merits alone. As I say, it didn't get any huge guffaws from me, but regardless of how funny you or I might personally think it, it is attempting to be a comedy video game. Like I would call that the genre. You get action games, you get RPGs, you get FPSs, city builders, whatever. What type of game is McPixel 3? Comedy. That's the main, the primary thing that it does. Anything else is secondary. This is Sauce being silly, telling jokes, doing bits, making skits, however you want to look at it, through the medium of a video game. And I genuinely think that's a rare thing. How often do you see that? I can think of probably three video games total in history that I know of that fit that bill, and two of them are McPixels. The other is Jazzpunk. And it's actually Jazzpunk creator Luis Hernandez who I have to thank for framing it in these terms for me. It's something he has briefly discussed on Twitter in the past. I'm sure some of you are shouting the names of funny games at the screen right now. Did you forget Portal? You shriek. What about Borderlands? Guybush Threepwood is your channel avatar. How did you miss Monkey Island? But they're not comedy video games. They're funny, sure. They use comedy as part of their narrative, but you could strip the comedy elements from them and still have something identifiable as a game. 
Portal would undeniably be a lesser experience without its stellar writing, but you'd still have a rock-solid puzzle game remaining. There's a very mild puzzle element to some of the McPixel skits, but quite a lot of it is pick an item from the things in the scene and watch some silly shit unfold. And without the silly shit, what's left? Pick a thing and one of them lets you win and move on? I mean, maybe we're getting into the metaphysical, philosophical conundrum of where to draw the line on what is a game? And that you can argue that even with the humour, maybe McPixel doesn't meet your criteria. But also, maybe, I don't care about that. What I can say is that with the humour, I'll gladly call McPixel a game. A comedy game. But without the humour, it would kind of cease to be anything of note at all. What I think makes it notable is its ability to push the boundaries of gaming as a medium, to challenge the idea of what a game can be. Rare is the game that does that effectively. Although not to over egg it too much. Sauce is charmingly irreverent, but I think a game developer first and foremost. A game developer who had a crack at making a funny thing. But these games definitely open up the door to ask the question, what if a comedian made a game? Yeah, I mean, I guess you might end up with a few high on lives, but if you could give someone funny, with no preconceived notions of what a game is supposed to be, free reign to translate their work to an interactive medium, you could make something really compelling. It doesn't even have to be comedy. That's simply a convenient example given the current subject matter. I'm not even sure what that would look like, and that's probably rather the point. At a time when the gaming industry often feels dominated by tired old franchises and exploitative cash grabs, someone daring to try out something new, mostly for shits and giggles, feels like a breath of fresh air. I don't think I have anything deeper to add to that, but it's nice to have something to feel optimistic about. And before you hit the comments, I'm, I'm not unaware of the irony of me celebrating a literal sequel for being innovative, but I wasn't thinking about games that hard ten years ago, and honestly, ten years on, there's still not many people doing much like this. My Pixel 3 is out now for about $10 on PC, Switch, and Xbox, and I think it's probably worth it for the novelty alone. Right, I said at the start I'd elaborate on the dearth of content around here lately. The content has been elsewhere. Folks who follow me on Twitter, or who are in the Button Mash Discord, links in the description, will already know that I have started a podcast. If you don't, I've started a podcast. Myself, Mr. Gablin, and Michael, aka the Button Mash Horse, are watching all of the Simpsons episodes in chronological order and exploring what they say about society. It's part time capsule, part social commentary, and lots of silly nonsense. It's called Mole Man in the Morning, and it's currently available on Spotify and Google Podcasts. Go have a listen. I can't promise I'll try to make more videos, but I will try to try.